and welcome to ASL Season 14 Revenge Battles. We've got seven epic games between Hero and Snow. Snow actually showed some very ferocious versus, uh, improvement in versus Zerg play. Typically, that's been his weakest matchup. But we have Hero, the third place finisher. We're going to be starting things off on Butter. In the upper right-hand corner, we got Hero starting as the brown Zerg. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Snow starting as the yellow Protoss. This is a 1v1 map. And one thing in particular I've seen Snow improve on in his PvZ matchup overall is being a little bit more frustrating with the initial pro counts. And he's done, a, honestly, I think a fantastic job of throwing Zerg off their stereotypical game. But this is Hero. Hero made it all the way to the semifinal. I think he, did he end up getting dispatched by, I'm trying to remember the happenings of ASL season 14, although there might be spoilers for some people out there, but I believe he ended up dropping to Royal and then ended up in the third place, fourth place match and prevailing there. Anyway, Snow, I would say if he's not the strongest Protoss at the moment, I don't know who to argue who is. Uh, there's a couple other guys in ASL season 15 that I don't want to give spoilers for, but I will say just overall, as a common staple of really strong Protoss play, we got Snow out here. It looks like he's maybe setting up for a Forge expand. Never mind, he's moving this pro in position, maybe. Well, Gateway First has been a lot more popular these days. Overlord already making its way, and we are seeing a pool first opener, maybe to mitigate early harassment from that probe. Also, a very quick gas at 118. Well, never mind, it looks like we're going to see an extractor trick at the uh, 118 mark. Throwing me off my game here. And we are going to see a gateway first opener, but Snow is going to need to be on the defensive as initial Zerglings are certain to be constructed. Usually if you see Gastless like this, that means there are going to in fact be six Zerglings out in the field. And I'm wondering if Hero is opting to do this to throw Snow more on the defensive, give him less options to create havoc in the early game, because that is something that he's been absolutely fantastic at doing recently. Snow, I think mostly known for his versus Terran play and his fantastic Reaver Micro, and I'm hoping to actually see in one of these matches, in particular Neo Arkanoid, which just begs for Corsair uh, Reaver play. I'm wondering if we're going to end up seeing it there and some fun right there. We already see that probe harass. The probe still has full health, and this drone is limping away at half health. As the initial six Zerglings being produced, Hero just cutting his losses, this drone licking its wound, and going to go ahead and get the reward. What a lazy button. Didn't do well against the initial probe, and then gets to become a hatchery. But it looks like the Zergling is just going to ignore that probe at the natural, make a dive to get the scouting information. Snow was setting up to maybe go for a Nexus follow-up, but he's going to need probably to build a forge. It would be very greedy if he didn't build a forge. Waiting on that second Zealot in a staggered position as the, Zer the Zerglings are making their way up. Looks like one has pulled off to try to engage that probe so it can't create a secondary blockade for the additional, basically wanted to save time. Nexus is building, and the Zerglings chasing their way through. So Snow, just presuming he's going to be able to defend this with fewer attack forces on the ground. Although I guess he does have... This is a winning situation theoretically in a heads-up fight. The amount of Zerglings versus the amount of Zealots. Hero doing what damage he can. Unfortunately, at the moment, just shredding shield. And keep in mind, shield does recharge. So as long as only shield is getting shredded, this will be an overall win for Snow. Three Zealots now out. And the other beautiful thing about this is having this many Zealots out in the early game and having this natural blockaded, Zergling dying right there and Hero having to retreat. These Zealots having taken no damage can start moving out onto the map and getting aggressive. And this is just with putting a Zealot and a probe at the in-between area. It looks like we do have an assimilator warping in. So what would usually be kind of a terror tactic for other Zerg versus Protoss, Snow turning it into no big deal with just that natural expansion seal and probe still getting all sorts of scouting information, critically waiting to see whether that layer is going to morph. I think Hero waiting on the morph, potentially. Looks like he's not morphing it at the third. Yeah, just skipping it all together. With the gas going Zergling speed first, and I'm wondering if he's going to try to go for a 973. On Butter, there is a fairly wide natural expansion to execute it, but usually if you're going for 973, you want to have your opponent a little bit more information deprived. And right now, Snow walking two Zealots and shutting down the third. More Zerglings being forced. We're going to have 10 Zerglings total to maybe deal with these two Zealots. Snow returning the favor for the earlier shenanigans. Drones, no drone losses at the very least. This is a lot of Zerglings, actually. And this is a huge early economic investment from Hero. 
Yeah, I think he's going to need to do some sort of some sort of early engagement to make these even the Zergling investment worth it. So he's got eight Zerglings left overall. The Overlord hovering in, just checking that natural. First cannon has been planted. We do have a cybernetic score Stargate plus one weapons upgrading. The initial Zealots have been dispatched. Second gas being grabbed from Snow, which suggests we're going to maybe see more High Templar play. And I take it back. We just saw a delayed layer overall. So getting Zergling speed out initially. And then going for layer to just have a somewhat slower spire, which suggests uh, we're going to see more of that four hatch style, but still producing the amount of Zerglings to start for hero. Just even then going to hurt his economy a little bit. Although as I say that, I see the drone count about within 10, not so bad. Just not exactly the powerful economic opener you want. Does allow for some sort of support dealing with Snow's initial zealots. And I'm wondering if he were actually tactically decided to produce more Zerglings here at the front, recognizing that Snow's strengths have been in the early game zealot play. Second cannon dropping, Snow, I think anticipate, again, maybe because of that later layer, putting down preventative cannons just in case there's some sort of bust. He still doesn't have an idea of the build order. It looks like we do have a fourth hatchery being planted, so I believe it is going to be that spire into five hatch hydralis play. The Zealots pushing those Zerglings off the front and the first Corsair making its way out. Plus one weapons about halfway finished. We do have Zealot leg speed being produced for potentially a plus one Zealot leg speed, uh, Zealot timing. Plus one weapons being upgraded as well. So Snow wants to maintain air advantage. Second extractor being grabbed from hero overall. And this Corsair should be able to get, so scooting in, it's gonna get some nice information but depending on positioning, should be able to get at least an Overlord kill. Looks like the Overlord that was over the natural evacuated. It's kind of in no man's land, but depending on distance and the Scourge positioning, well, actually, it looks like it's going to pull off. Actually, we're seeing six hatch. So this might be just six hatch Mutalisk now with that second gas that's been grabbed. So Hero wanting to play heavy on Mutalisks. More times than not, though, yeah, the Corsair is engaging, drawing the Scourge away, but that's also what I, I thought theoretically was going to deny a little information to Hero. Instead, the Scourge has spotted those Zealots making their way. And with that information spot, he's just going to go ahead and back out. Hydralis Den and Sunken Colony being built. You can see Hero already anticipating that attack, but it's not coming. That's the other advantage of Scourge in the early game is, is not only can you keep Corsair off your Overlords, but you can also get that scouting information out in the field. You can see they're already on patrol trying to keep an eye on those Zealots, and Hero thus far doing a fantastic job, really negating where other Zerg have faltered in Snow's ability to just harass and get Zealots all over the map in the mid-game, and he's already surging on his drone count, has an ev a double evolution chamber, sorry, he's got a single evolution chamber up there as part of the SimCity, but is in a fine position to transition into the uh, five hatch Hydralisk, although it looks like he is upgrading armor on the Mutalist to give himself that transitionary option. I actually love a statement that Jayun made previously, which is, uh, and actually looks like I already missed the Mutalisks. Man, this is not my best commentary, I'm gonna have to admit. Mutalisks out on the field. Going to go ahead and engage the Zealots. Third gas being built from Hero. Everybody has their off days, I suppose. And I am not excluded from that. So the Mutalisks have been constructed. We have that plus one carapace. So Hero is in fact going for the six hatch Mutalist, but he does have the Hydra Stend to, to fold back to into six Hatch Hydra. Plus one weapons just about finished. The Corsair count still very, very healthy. We've got six Corsairs and an Archon shortly. Usually that's enough to go ahead and bully Air Forces back, engaging over the natural expansion. Now the Corsairs moving out. Scourge attempting to push the Corsair back. They're able to momentarily, but Hero just going to back off. Doesn't want to risk it. As plus one weapons finishes, though, those Corsair are going to want to look, want to pick a fight. Losing one of their numbers there. The Zealots streaming out. They've got that plus one weapons and that leg speed. But where are they going to hit? We've got a good number of Hydralisks and Sutton Colonies at various locations. I don't know that Snow has the best engagement point to really punish Hero at any of these bases. Archon moving out in front to try to absorb damage. Corsair scooting around, hunting for any overlords in open field. One overlord actually eating some free damage from the Archon out on the front. And this is a sizable investment in resources from Snow. And you can see Hero's actually got the worker lead. So he does need to start 
doing some damage someplace. The Mutalisks, looking, I might have missed the, some more Mutalisk harass at the natural, dropping the probe count, but the Mutalisks just scattering. In the meantime, my observer, my, we're going to call this a scratch uh, for me. Just overall, we'll keep casting regardless, though. Mutalisks starting to fold back to maybe provide some support. The Scourge doing a fantastic job from Hero, keeping an eye on the army positioning. Looks like finally one of them being wiped out. Another grouping of Zealots pushing out for snow. He's got a gigantic supply lead right this second. He just needs to crash out a location and make that supply lead count. But man, there is a wall of Hydralisks at the natural. A huge wall of Hydralisks with plus one weapons just about to finish at both locations. Keep in mind, we're going to have a little bit of Psy Storm support from snow. To, and that's really going to be the huge factor here is how many Hydralisks is he able to Psy Storm. The Mutalisks once again engaging at the natural, able to wipe out that cannon, drawing some troops back. They can't one-shot the probes right now, but that is buying more time for Hero to fill in that troop gap. And right now he's dangerously close to an even count. And this has got to be frustrating for Snow because he invested in those Corsairs heavily to, in theory, maintain air control and mitigate the early game Mutalisk play. And granted, Hero hasn't dedicated a lot of Mutalisks, but he's managed to basically keep his economy rolling without any sort of counter. It looks like finally the Mutalisks getting engaged there mid-map. So Snow... Still with a bit of a supply lead, maybe he can stage out and push and grab that third, but as he's moving to grab that third, it is very likely that Hero could start swarming him because Hero, now you can see the Hydralisk count being built and very rapidly, they're gonna start moving out on the field. I'm wondering if there's going to be a wait uh, for uh, Lurker tech. We do have a couple more Hydralisk spawning just because of the massive amount of Zealot forces. Meantime, in the main, all sorts of gateways behind this. Plus one armor upgrading. It's still just been the single forge. Sorry, plus two armor upgrading. Just been the single forge. Hero actually moving out himself to maybe grab his third. A drone is going to have to retreat from that location. Is Snow moving in to deny it? But now a huge Hydralisk force swarming the Archons and the Zealots. And wow, that's a lot of Hydralisks. Go ahead and back out. And there's more potentially coming. So I do believe that Snow is going to need to push back out of that, that fourth, potentially. It looks like he's going to try to grab his third simultaneously at the three o'clock location. Drones scooching in amidst the Zealots. If the Zealots could wipe it out, that would be a pretty big boon. We do have some Lurkers out as well, and I don't see a lot of Observers as of yet on Snow's side of the field. Fortunately, he does have a massive amount of Psy Storm behind this. So Snow is going to be able to establish his third. Hero actually going ahead and checking out some additional bases, and I'm wondering if Hero's going to be able to grab his fourth. I think... Hero, though, has got to feel good about his situation here. He's got a massive amount of Hydralisks already. Plus two weapons is not that far from finishing. A lot of Lurkers. Snow doesn't have that third up and running as of yet. I, I don't see Snow being able to deny that fourth. And honestly, I could see Hero just grabbing yet another base and supply counts just about even. And Snow has done absolutely nothing to touch Hero's economy this entire time. Whereas Hero has managed to get a good amount of probe counts of a good amount of probe kills there at the natural earlier in the field. So no engagements as of yet. Both players continuing to macro up. We have a huge lurker defensive line as a soft contain. I should more call that a uh, solid defense. Of course, they're scouting ahead to go ahead and get eyes on everything. And I still, again, there's finally the first observer moving up. Keep in mind that observer needs to be very heavily protected. Overlord speed is online and these hydralists do have plus two weapons in just a smidge of a second which is going to make those observers very vulnerable. And with the, it looks like finally the Mutalists being taken out. Midfield, Snow staging up. The observer diving forward, a lot of free hits. The Dragoon's leading. And in vision range, I think there's that observer range upgrade, which is making all the difference for Snow to be able to take out a couple of Lurkers without taking too much damage. But I still don't think he likes the positioning walking downhill into that Lurker line. Great Psy Storm across the Lurkers that were trying to encroach from the west. Lurkers repositioning and more Psy Storm as they're landing and Snow having some fantastic engagements right here. The, the Hydralis, despite having plus two weapons, not able to get a whiff of a High Templar and their lines getting completely obliterated. And that is exactly what Snow needs to continue to do and maintain his army. It looks like Hero maybe wanting to trap this army in, but running into Hero's reinforcements. The Observer making its way back, still light, and man, that Psy Storm doing 
a massive amount of work a huge overlord grouping moving across as well maybe to create some distractionary fire maybe trying to bait as though it were a drop but they're just going to end up there's nothing in them hero not buying it considering the land army that's behind this and not drawing back so these overlords need to be careful otherwise the corsairs could potentially get to work at least they'll be able to spot the dts and maybe uh, a follow-up drop that is coming but snow very wisely not falling for that massive overlord move a lesser player might have completely retreated believing that that was a, a mass drop moving in but holding his ground keeping engagement on the hydralisks the hydralisks able to pick off an archon right there but eating a lot of lightning on the retreat it looks like this might be an overwhelming swarm however finally for hero as high templar getting picked off he just has a lot so snow despite displaying a worker lead being pushed back into his natural expansion he does have some cannons up near that third but honestly with the swarm that hero has on the ground could potentially push up into there so despite the early engagements hero's economy just too massive yeah some hydros now breaking off working towards that third while reinforcements are blocked out by a massive hydralis force there sidestorm thinning the lines as they're trying to go from the north some additional hydralis trying to go through that's going to be all the sidestorm expended and now that third looks like it's going to get breached while that natural expansion the hydros backing off and engaging troops as best they can some probes losing their lives and this is going to be a massive loss for hero but while that was happening a dark templar able to get into the main for snow and the drones getting obliterated there finally an overlord able to go but not before a lot of hydralists were wiped out so despite thinning out the probe count at that location the corsair is getting a lot of overlord kills and some dark templar wreaking, ha wreaking havoc in the main to completely equalize the worker count overall and obliterating hero's economy so where i thought hero was going to start walking away with this match instead is lucky to keep things alive at his bane it looks like the hydralis just now getting cleaned up from hero unfortunately in the worker reset it's usually easy for Zerg to rapidly replenish those worker lines to get in full production again. Although this Dark Templar is not finished. More drones losing their lives. Overlord, is he going to get out? No, just finally finally perishes some zealots. However, marching to an exposed natural, or should say an exposed base here at the 10 o'clock. Be natural on another map, not on this one. Dragoons and High Templar filtering out as well to maybe get an attack done at another location the hydralisks diving in they do have plus one carapace the zealots dancing in between close on upgrades it looks like the zealots not going to get a lot accomplished there but snow following that up with a massive army move out i think snow does want to start thinking about grabbing an additional base as his mains or his naturals mined out his main is a little bit thin has emergency minerals there hero of course still has his main to work with his natural expansion completely obliterated though by that previous dark templar antics and the repositioning of drones hydralisks filtering in to engage that army having to dodge sidestorm and eat dragoon fire as they're pushing in and out we still have a lot of these overlords that if they get caught by snow could be that would be a, a devastating loss as well four bases still up and running from here he's got a better saturation this is snow's one mining base effectively at this stage but he still has a superior army right now high templar being preserved here moving in it looks like engaging the archon up on the high ground plus two weapons advantage now slightly over that plus one carapace and the side storm has just real especially the side storm has been right there as the dragoons have been on the front line so they're able to levy damage while the hydralists are dodging and that is dropping hero's unit count to nearly half of what snow is fielding and snow recognizes it it's continuing to push out i haven't seen him make any moves to grab a fourth just pressing and looking to wipe out the base now at the 10 o'clock what is this actually is that right yeah 10 o'clock position i'm going to do my i don't want to call it math my clock work <laughs> that's not the phrase i want to use either archon able to clean things out snow blockading any reinforcements some zerglings moving out in the line we've seen no movements to hive tech by the way so it's just been lair tech this entire time hero now down to 29 drones and the archon just devouring those zerglings 
as they're sweeping in. It looks like some Hydralisks able to engage from the rear. Let's see if Snow regroups. He's still got a massive supply lead now over his opponent. Still, again, has not moved out to grab a fourth at this stage, but he has dropped Hero now to three bases. I guess technically two bases is that natural expansion is going to get mining again, or at least Hero might want to re re-maneuver, but down to just 29 drones otherwise. You're trying to move around. Looks like he's... Well, he's got these overlords exposed. We got four Archons in the front as well. Coming at an oblique angle away from that Sunken Colony. Hydro's trying to push in. There's no side storm to really punish them for going through a gap. So it looks like Snow's just going to back out. But he also has a secondary attack force with Archons and Zealots moving towards the natural expansion as well. And I don't think Hero has enough to defend at either location. So if he retreats the Hydralisks from his third, he'll end up losing his natural. And this is going to be the GG maneuver as Snow with an overwhelming attack force pressing through and taking it. And therefore winning, whoop, winning game one. Speaking of being off, I guess neither of these players is off their game. I'm off my game with game one, the camera work. Let's go ahead and tack on, whoop, game one to snow. It's really a, it's fun watching his PVZ these days. So where Hero did a really good job of shutting down the things that typically were the strengths for snow, in the early matches, Snow still able through just fantastic troop positioning and a heroic DT drop, throwing Hero off his game. And that was at a really critical moment as well where I thought Hero was sealing the victory. Gonna move on to Neo Sylphid. I think Neo Sylphid is one of my favorite maps these days 12 o'clock location we have hero starting as the yellow zerg bottom left hand corner we have snow starting as the red protoss so it's not stereotypical like your four your four base but you've got you know the the somewhat open third that forces a little bit more interesting play and yeah you do have this ramp base that's a potential to take but it's so far away from that natural expansion that it must be defended and so just because of i think interesting map design where the base that might be more beneficial to take is a little bit that's a little bit potentially easier to defend is at a further distance and with more gas in tow keep in mind that's only a 1500 gas at the central which is kind of critical for zerg usually they want to have that more gas heavy uh, gas heavy expansion i think it makes more interesting potential for drops all sorts of shenanigans shenanigans that's what makes starcraft fun right Anyway, initial Overlord Scout for Hero is going towards Snow's natural expansion. That will be a huge advantage as he'll be able to see troop production, cannon placement, things along those lines. Also see potentially as Zealots are making their way out. See if Snow goes for, he is going to go for a gateway first. This time it looks like Hero wants to go for a 12 hatchery, maybe 11 hatchery. Probe is going to get first scout, sees the Overlord, so knows exactly what direction to head towards that 12 o'clock. Hopefully I'll do better camera work this game. Drone grouping up. It looks like it's not the... One advantage of the 11 hatch versus the 12 is with the 11, you can get it down before that probe sneaks in and is able to do some sort of interruption at the natural. I'm almost wondering if that's kind of taken over. One of the reasons 11 versus 12 hatch has been... Uh... But this is also going to be an opportunity for Snow to show off that fancy, fancy probe micro he's got. Gonna steal some minerals as well. Even actually, I think mining there causes a bit of interruption. 203 gas, which suggests potentially two hatch mutilus play. Overlord sitting over that gateway to keep note of how many zealots are produced and whether they are moving out in the field or not. And a drone initially I thought was gonna be dedicated, but it looks like it's just gonna move out either to get I don't think that's going to be for extra scouting information. I'm assuming that's moving out to check the third. Another Overlord moving out. Zealot rushing across the field. Spawning pool a smidge away from being produced. Actually, the drone... Okay, moving out to blockade the Zealot and buy some time for those Zerglings. Although not really creating any delay thus far. The Zealot's still just marching straight ahead. 
Zergling's on the way. Derp me. It looks like Snow, yeah, realizing that he wasn't going to be able to get much out of that. Six Zerglings are in production for Hugo to turn around and get aggressive. Kind of off my game. It's going to be another eight Zerglings start from Hero to again have some of that map control and try to negate Snow's early game pressure play. I like that. Maybe even have some continued dedication to wipe out early scouts. We'll see. Nexus being constructed, Forge being constructed as well. That Overlord can go ahead and sidle in for Hero and confirm that, that the, there's a Nexus behind all this. The Zerglings marching their way out. So this is, yeah, this is a pretty heavy... 10 Zerglings, pretty heavy dedication in the early game. Granted, it's it'll help negate those three Zealots, but usually you want to try to keep the Zerglings as few and light as possible. I guess he's just assuming that it was going to be the initial Zealot count out in play. One... Being, a few being pulled back to go ahead and engage, and that Overlord stalwart we watching Snow's front lines. I think this is why the One Gate has been a lot more popular as of recently, because it does allow the option for aggressive uh, zealot play. But man, look at this. Yeah, Hero just definitely does not want to let... Going for the full cadre of Zerglings now, with speed first again. This time, yeah, going for a 973 is going to try to soften up the front as much as he can for some follow-up Hydralisks. Let's see if Snow recognizes it. And the Gateway actually might even take some base damage. This is really going to speed up the Hydralisks' work. And it's actually not even going to be the three-hatch 973. It's going to be a two-base play. Two-hatch Hydralisk to crash in. Overlord hovering over the main now to confirm the tech there. I think Snow has got it sniffed out, though, because he's putting a secondary preventative pylon to keep the cannons powered at his natural. And maybe that's as a result of seeing that full group of Zerglings starting to move out with his Zealots himself. The Zerglings looking for that stranded split Zealot to maybe get an easy kill with better cavity. Also trying to buy time, but Snow now moving out. The Zerglings ending around, maybe trying to draw those Zealots back. And these Zealots are going to be in for a big surprise as they make their way towards that natural. So I'm wondering if Hero is just trying to create a bit of a bluff as though he's trying to draw and buy time and push these zealots back but really what he's doing is just waiting for yeah that crash moment where he'll be able to pincer the troops in between the zergling staying out of the natural expansion cannon range i think snow maybe has with the timing of all this have got because he's not seeing yeah i think he recognizes it he's already no i think he's thinking mutalisks because he's dropping the cannons at the rear at the natural. And so I think he was suspecting two hatch mutilus play instead from the follow up of the Zerglings. And this is going to leave a very exposed natural to Hero. A Dragoon act. Yeah, a Dragoon moving out. So he was thinking this is going to be airplay. So Hero catching him completely off guard. Now a preventative cannon being dropped. But the two hatch Hydralisk. Yeah, there's the cancel. So a misread from Snow, and that might be game. The Zer and keep in mind, yeah, the Zerglings softened up that gateway. So two cannons remain, one at the rear position. And the Zealots absolutely melting. Probes off the line on top of the Hydralisks, but it is going to be insufficient. And one cannon remains. There's GG from Snow. Great play from Hero to put Snow in the dark. And just a bad read. Yeah, Snow just didn't have the information he was looking for. Thought it was to hatch Hydralisk with everything that was out there. I think he knew something was up because of the sheer volume of Zerglings that were produced. And I almost feel like that was maybe a calculated play from Hero in game one to go a little bit like slightly heavier on the Zergling count. So it's like, okay, maybe I'm going more Zergling to just shut down your early game Zealot. And then he followed it up with even more Zerglings in game two. To maybe throw, and he did uh, keep in mind, go for more the the four hatch, or what was it, five? <laughs> this is my brain today. I think it was five six. It ended up going for six hatch mutalisk to fold back to hydralisk. Yeah, but he kept the mutal count somewhat low. So playing mind games with his opponent potentially. We're gonna move on to uh, Odyssey, which usually. 
I would say this is going to be a straight up, I, I think this is just a challenging match, uh, map for Protoss. It is one of those maps where I'm hoping to see Corsair Reaver, especially out of snow, knowing how strong his, his Corsair shuttle Reaver play is. If you guys, uh, as a quick refresher, you've got that protected natural in the rear with an unpowered photon cannon blockading. Only 3,000 gas in position. You've got the a second gas in the main that's split 4,000, 1,000. A 5,000 gas, so actually more gas at the natural expansion. More often than not, Zerg will end up going from hero's perspective, go for this third because you've got the 5,000 gas there. But that does uh, create some rear mineral options because one thing that oftentimes is the play for Protoss is like how am I going to secure my third and here that third is a little bit easier to secure if you maintain air control although occasionally I could see uh, an attempted uh, temple break and rush you just have to keep it and that's where Corsairs can be really beneficial is keeping an eye over the Zelnaga temples and whether they're being taken out to open up that section it looks like we are going to see a forge first build from snow we might see it that could also be because there's just massive distances between the natural or between the two bases despite that we are seeing an overpool from hero i'm wondering if he was hoping to get one thing for the one advantage to protoss is, is because of that rear base it is a lot easier to keep your probe alive in the early stages but a very quick scout from Snow into Hero's base, wanting to make sure of what the build order. Maybe wanting to make sure you can get a Nexus out a little bit earlier. I don't know the timings on this map to where, whether you can try to sneak against Overpool, whether you can try to sneak a Nexus first or not. I trust Snow on this, and I think you can, yeah, sneak Nexus before Cannon just because of the rush distances. And it's still fine. Which is another reason I'm a little bit surprised, given the rush distances, why, why Hero is opening up the spawning pool. And he is sending the Zerglings out. He's not attempting to go after Snow's initial probe. Interestingly enough, Hero is going for that 3 o'clock very rapidly. And we're seeing 3 hatch before gas. And that was kind of an interesting play. I don't know if Hero's trying to fake that out or not, but he's almost faking out like he was getting some cancellation action with that drone going towards the gas, maybe to try to throw snow off the trail that it was in fact three hatch before gas. But considering how late that gas went down, I have to suspect that snow recognizes that it was a, a three hatch, a three hatch grab. Assimilator warping in, Nexus coming online, gateway being built overlord going to go ahead and reposition and throw itself into the main to see whether there is in fact a cybernetic score being constructed the zerglings have pulled back they're now starting to work but it, yeah it just feels like that overpool a little bit of a a slower economic start although granted going for the three hatch before pool will help hero make up that difference it's not like he's hurting for minerals or hurt, hurting for drones right now is actually in pretty good position overall Cybernetics core warping in. And this is where, yeah, okay, we got a second gas. So fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen, whether we'll see the uh, Corsair Reaver play or not. I have a feeling if we do see an attempt at Corsair Reaver for snow, he'll maybe try to hide the Stargate at the natural rather than building it. Maybe the or robotics facility, I should say, at the uh, natural rather than building it at the main. Can end up serving a dual purpose as well as the Reavers if they pop out here to the natural. They're a little bit there. Uh, they're a little bit. More Johnny on the spot to provide some support. Double Hydralis Den from Hero, which I have to assume is a mistake, or this is just some completely newfangled build. And a 973. Now we'll see if we'll see if Hydralis speed gets upgraded on the second Hydralis Den. But I have to, I this has to be a mistake. That's a lot of resources to throw down the drain. It looks like a zealot encroaching here at the three o'clock. No. This is some weird modification. 
I have never seen this. So double Hydralis then to get the upgrades for the Hydralis a little bit more rapidly. To go for some sort of play, Zerglings engaging the Zealots. It looks like that probe has been pushed out of the main. So looking at the drone count here, we got, we got six, we got four. And we got, uh, let's keep the gas minus one there. So eight and the Hydralis already producing. So these Hydralis are going to have the upgrades much more rapidly on the front. I think Snow recognizes just maybe uh, seeing the, the four drones here at the third. Recognizes and also seeing the Hydralis spawn. Now he knows for sure that it's a Hydralis opener. Corsair working on that forward overlord while it still can. But this is going to be a really interesting play. Snow already has a massive slew of cannons to defend. This is very all-in-ish from Hero because that is a sizable investment. He's stuck at the 21 drone count right this second. And usually, yeah, you just have to dedicate a lot of Hydralisks anyway. The Zealots have been taken care of. I'm curious to see whether this works or not. It looks like not. Because Snow already has those cannons in place. And I'm wondering what the site I have to assume. That's just not a build, right? What advantage is there? Weird. I mean, you get the range and the speed a little bit more, but... Certainly going to be able to take out the gateway. Might be able to take out plus one weapons. But uh, it looks like Snow's going to be in fine position to drop additional cannons. And Hero is very all-in-ish at this stage. The Corsair has taken some damage. Looks like he's going to drop another hatchery at the third. And I'm wondering if he just went for it. If he accidentally dropped that Hydral Sten and just... Or if that is like an actual build. Cannon being cancelled to preserve some resources there. For Snow. Corsair checking out, making sure that there's no third. And I'm wondering if he's gone into the main and seen this yet. Yeah, and the Hydral's just waiting out. I have to assume that that was just a botch from Hero, or was like, whoops. Yeah, he's got to see it now, and he's got to be chuckling to himself. Maybe it was for the fans. Fourth hatchery being grabbed. Or I should say fourth base being grabbed, not hatchery. We've got two hatcheries. So two, three, four, five hatch, and tech to lair. He's going he's gonna to have one hydro stun too many to upgrade to Lurker. Be the final upgrade remaining. Uh, Snow going for a gateway flood. Unfortunately, he's got double forge upgrades, Templar archives, and Citadel of Adun as well. A six hatchery being tacked onto the three o'clock. The Corsair able to spot it. So yeah, and I think they're going to be able to find that hatchery bottom right. So I think Hero just hoping that he'll be able to transition this into a forward contain. We are seeing the robotics facility. I have a feeling that's going to be more for High Templar dropping, though. I would be so excited, but we haven't seen a second Stargate yet. Looks like the additional assimilator being dropped down for Snow to pocket a little bit of additional gas. I think, yeah, Snow just wants to recheck. Really? Two Hydralsten? Able to confirm it. Zealots storming out briefly. They do not have... Keep in mind that plus one weapons uh, did not complete. But able to get a good pin and white and really thinning the herd on the front. And that's going to open up an overlord kill as well. Yeah, hero just getting a little bit... So initially not continuing to dedicate with the Hydralisks. And now a little bit low on the troop count. Because he's got... Yeah, he needs to surge his Hydralisk count. It's actually a pretty healthy drone count overall, but really needs to just get a good Sim City rolling and keep an eye on these roaming zealots because he's got to look at the this huge ter look at the territory that Hero needs to defend here, and there is a lot of space on this map to run around, and on top of that, there is a shuttle and more Dark Templar and High Templar on the way. More zealots marching out, so zealots to the north. I feel like this is a little bit playing towards snow strengths. I, although I think it was more of an emergency maneuver. It was like an, oh crap, I built too many Hydral Sten and now it looks like Lurker Tech's still being researched. So they're not going to be egg, be able to egg, trying to buy time and drawing some troops there. I think there are easily going to be some drone kills before the Hydral's, at the very least, some economic disruption. 
The Zealot's not dedicating to another attack location now that these Hydros completely pushed out of position, though. And the drones completely removing themselves from the scene. More Zealots marching out to the 3 o'clock as that shuttle is sidling its way up to the north, although currently it's empty. So I don't know if this is going to be a Zealot drop or just a miscalculation. Never mind, there's a Dark Templar that got scooped up in the midst of there. A lot of High Templar on the front to defend against any sort of counter pressure. We do have an Overlord, but are we going to have an Overlord for long? Hydros to defend nearby. The Zealot's creating a distractionary attack and already the drone kills. Three Hydralisks right there to maybe do some damage. More Hydralisks moving up and more Overlords moving up. Looks like Overlord speed was not neglected. Plus one weapons, plus one armor off that double forge rolling. Immediately starting them up again. Plus one weapons is there on the Hydralisk, so it looks like Hero is keeping pace. And actually, as he's transitioned out of this, these High Templar need to get some damage done because Hero's, again, just showing his powerful macro and very close to an even worker count and very close to an even attack count overall. Hydralisk... Morphing to Lurker to go ahead and blockade an attack on the bottom right. That shuttle going to be escorted out. So despite having a huge space of territory to try to defend, Hero establishing more gas and making it work. And Snow has not made any maneuvers thus far to grab his third. And Overlord's actually watching across that 9 o'clock. We also see an Overlord there. Supply count's close to even which is not what you want as a Protoss. It looks like we do have that shuttle wandering its way out. And Hero actually doing a really good job of mirroring the movements of that army, although that shuttle has managed to sneak through. I think there's plenty of overlords, so... And this is a shuttle without speed. It has been spotted. Overlord tacked to it now. Yeah, so not going to be able to get anything accomplished. The Zealots retreating across midline, and Snow now starting to move out to maybe... So holding the high ground position, a lot of High Templar are pushing out as well. Able to catch a segregated Hydralisk army, so getting some damage done there. The shuttle now moving in. Again, that Overlord just following it wherever it goes. But Hero, despite being up in workers and having a superior base count, his army getting caught out in the field and pushed back all the way to the temple line here. There's plenty of observers out. Not a lot of lurkers. And a lot of Psystorm in this grouping. Hero also in the red. As Snow, and he needs to start building defenses to deal with Snow. Dragoons leading. Psystorm as the reinforcements trying to come up. And this is unfortunate because, wow, walking right into a barrage of storms. That is a lot of Zerg blood on the ground. That might be the GG maneuver right there. More reinforcements moving up to try to clear out what's left, but there's going to be more size storm potentially to greet them. And yeah, this is an engagement they have to land. Otherwise, they're going to end up losing that natural. So the Hydro is getting completely obliterated yet again. Still a 40 supply lead and all the Dragoons remain. Archon's morphing as well. And there's yet another size storm that's going to be there. And it looks like the move towards plus two weapons is going to be stymied and G hero gg right there he just did not have enough to stop snow snow with the fantastic engagement forcing i love the force of position where he's forcing hero to engage him at the natural just creating a bulk of troops and then just dropping lightning on their heads so despite what looked like a fantastic economic recovery over what i am just going to call a miffed double hydro. I'll just call it a build order. I'll say there, there was an attempt at some sort of interesting double build. Double hydro build order. Although my suspicion is still that it was unintentional. Um, regardless. Snow <laughs> prevails. Able to take down the two bases. This hero again not able to defend all points. We're going to move on to Allegro. And interestingly enough, Allegro, again, known for its smaller distances, uh, 
modification on Largo. Upper left hand corner, we have Hero starting as the Teal Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we have Snow as the Orange Protoss. There's a good amount of space to get Zealots lost here as well with kind of this middle star, four pointed star to work with where you can kind of dive in uh, a lot of Zealots. So it's, it's oddly a smaller map, but despite being a smaller map, there's a lot of space to remain hidden, which is a little bit counterintuitive. There, just this entire area in the middle is just very, it can be challenging. You can lose zealots there. And that will theoretically play towards Snow's early game strengths. Ooh, he's actually putting a pylon on the high ground, maybe to throw off the build order, or maybe to just get a better SimCity on the front. I assume this means we're gonna see a gateway opener. Could be risking a 12 Nexus, but that would be, usually you want the pylon on the low ground for that, and that would be extremely risky on a four player map, especially with the close rush distances. Once again, we're gonna see a nine pool, so early pool play from Hero. I would not be shocked to see Hero once again go for the uh, large early game Zergling count to try to negate Snow's early game Zealot play. Probe making its way to the bottom left hand corner first. Kind of an odd position. Checking for the Overlord before drawing back. Quick, wow, very quick extractor as well for Hero. So going for it looks like initial one base play. One, blaze, one base play in some form, and I'm wondering if this is just to get, we'll see if they draw off after they get 100 gas to maybe just get quick Zergling speed, or if this is gonna turn into some sort of, and I, I presume that's gonna be the case. Once 100 gas is there, we'll see if the drones uh, remove themselves. Otherwise, yeah, very interesting. And Zergling speed being upgraded. So that delays layer tech a little bit, but having that Zergling speed and a lot of the Zerglings out on the field, that does help mitigate early game Zealot pressure and provide some follow-up. But that does slow down, keep in mind, the natural... It's, slow, it's an economic hit to get early game uh, positional control. I'm wondering if it'll catch... If Snow will be a surprise. Ooh, that probe shooting the gap, wanting to make its way back. And I think seeing a lack of a natural and actually seeing more Zerglings field out might be an indicator. Is this an all-in? Yeah, this is turning into an all-in Zergling build from Hero. He's just going all-in Zerglings now. One base Zergling. So ignore any th theoretical whatever. Although as I say that, it, he could just pause the Zergling construction. But look at all these Zerglings crashing towards the natural. He really does not want to mess around with any early game problems from those Zealots. Full control group already. That's a full control group really before that hatchery was planted which is really hurting his economy. And that's why I was suspecting like an early, like an all-in Zergling play here. Because more typically than not, like when you have that large a dedication to early Zerglings, it's not just for control. No, I take it back. He is continuing the, the Zergling production. Just pausing a moment to get that second hatchery to get more larva. So it is going to be an all-in dive with Zerglings. Snow trying to engage some Zerglings actually able to sneak through with that speed. That is now complete. Working on the pylon at the main, going to tax snow. So basically what this comes down to, with just holding at eight, eight drones, going for a third in base hatchery, still no gas. So yeah, three hatch all in Zergling. I haven't seen this one in a while. If snow holds, he will end up winning economically overall. He has some probes to bleed, but he does need to keep that gateway up. He does need to continue to produce troops on the front. He's got a cannon up at the main. At this stage, it might be worthwhile to build a cannon back at his nexus as well. Hero has invested so heavily in these Zerglings. It is a massive economic hit. Five Zerglings still in the main. They really can't approach the natural because that cannon will do damage. Some Zerglings or some, some Zealots breaking off. It looks like they're going to try to work on that pylon. There is already a second pylon in place. Zealots stopping that shenanigan. And yeah, I believe Snow holds and gets that gas up. And now Hero is in a conundrum where he's at half the worker count. He's really obliterated his early game economy with what was, it looked like like a uh, somewhat undedicated Zergling all in, which is why I wasn't calling it straight off where usually you'll just see it straight one hatch and nothing but Zerglings. But here it was kind of like in between now trying to fill in that 
drone count a bit is grabbing that 12 o'clock base but what a massive early game economic hit and really look he's gotten one probe out of this really not worth it overall to the point where i don't know if he's gonna he's gonna have to go to hydralisks in the mid game otherwise he's gonna end up losing straight up the air battle in overlords just period Zalt's continuing to deal with those zerglings in the main this so a transition to four hatch hydralisk never mind he's going lair so we'll see where hero goes from this but this feels like a very scattered botched sort of build although the natural expansion has been denied quite a bit i guess because zerglings or probes have not been able to transfer as of yet under zergling pressure now starting to transfer that direction it's actually a little bit safer with that cannon along that edge but sizable supply lead already we have that stargate constructing and the layer's not even finished and i still don't see a hydro stand anywhere so hero i mean he's going to be forced to do it otherwise snow's just going to completely obliterate his overlord lines and we already have two overlords at the main which are just going to be sacrificial children more zergling streaming across plenty of zealots to blockade a second cannon being dropped just in case The pylon on that edge. So yeah, Snow has completely shut this down. Completely shut it down. And I'm honestly surprised by the attempt. I do want to say that Hero has uh, somehow macroed back up to a close worker count. Cannon blocking. Yeah, there's the Spire building. But there's going to be a massive amount of time and a fifth hatchery as well. There's still going to be a massive amount of time where this Corsair is going to be out and there's just going to be no air to speak of, period. Honestly, the second Corsair should be out by the time... Oop, got another probe. Somehow, what the heck? Somehow Hero managed to close the gap on the workers. He's actually got a worker lead, still behind in supply. Going to six hatch Mutalisk. The Corsair is going to wander up, see a Spire that's not yet finished. What is happening in this game? One third complete right there. Now a Hydralis den. Yeah, he's got to see. Okay, that Spire is just now completing. And look at this. All the larvae have been utilized nearby. Okay, there's the first Scourge. We have a second Corsair. No second Corsair. Sorry, there's a second Corsair. Should be able to get a field day on these overlords. But Hero has surged ahead somehow with the drones in between. I don't know what to say. So one kill right there. Should be able to retreat. It's going to get this Overlord as well. And this is where Hero's probably going to pay for it. Is just in an inability and also the... Yeah, Zergling's not being constructed. I don't see any... It looks like plus one weapons being there. But this is plenty of else to deal with the Zerglings. Scourge pulling back. That Corsair's got a kill. Hero in the red when he needs to build defenses against these eight Zealots marching up to the 12 o'clock. No sunken here. So... That's going to be a shutdown third, very likely. The Overlords, not sure where they scatter to, but it looks like they've managed to retreat somehow. The Zelts wanting to mix it up against the Zerglings. And easily doing so. Snow should have this game. <laughs> I have faith in him. The Corsair is still wandering around everywhere. Massive amount of Zerglings being built to try to deal with this. The Zelts still standing and right on top of these Hydralisks as they're spawning. Finally, some drone kills at the 12 o'clock. I got to say, a fantastic defense from Hero because he's only lost units. A Zealot, however, has managed to march all the way into the, the main somehow. Both Corsairs alive, making the way back. Haven't found any open ground units. Gateway Flood, High Templar already out. So we got, what, five, six, seven? Seven gateways overall? I got to say, this just is a testament to Hero's ability to macro and find ways to get back into this. I'm still going to give the advantage, the sizable advantage to Snow. But, uh... But, wow. Uh, he's got an okay drone... He's got an okay drone count. He's down in the supply, which is not where you want to be. But he's in a somewhat defensible position. Which shocks me after that opening. 
trying to grab yet another base. A Dark Templar finding it immediately. Overlord's nowhere near to be found, so that's going to be canceled hatchery. So that's going to be additional economic economic losses here. Scourge wandering. It looks like that. Yeah, so cancellation. Overlord speed was completed. Where did... Yeah. Just wondering where how hero... Any other player I would see do this, I'd be like, yep, that was game. You just dedicated too many Zerglings, and, and you went one base uh and went for the speed before even getting his natural expansion so too much of an economic hit to start although as i say that snow with a massive growing that supply lead still sitting on two bases i slew of gateways this is where it should start costing him is just uh in the follow-up ability to produce troops trying to re-grab that fourth base and this is where I was talking about in the early game where it's very easy to lose zealots in the midfield. So he's get a, he's got a spot of them with that hydralisk force, but he needs to keep a needs to keep hunting them down and pushing them off. Hero now surging his supply. Big attack army behind this. Waiting to make a move. And we see a queen's nest and an evolution. So we're gonna see a tech the hive. As Lurker Tech just about finishing. Single Scourge lands out on the front as the Zelts start marching out. These Zelts being hunted down along that right hand side. So and you can just see on the minimap, just follow the minimap movements as heroes scattering everywhere. The Zealots able to get behind enemy lines now. Some pocketed here. Scattering every which way, but they're not attacking any concentrated location. 20 supply lead now for snow about where you want to be a l is behind in the overall worker count though and that's as that fourth is saturating zealots sitting near the third it's like a single zealot in the top right to potentially deny that base overall hydralis now pincer between two groups of zealots eating some free damage the scourge that were waiting out front Losing their lives as well. More Hydralis starting to swarm. They're going to try to greet this army midfield. Zelts regrouping to join up with the support Psy Storm. And the Dragoons getting some free damage as those Hydralisks on retreat. Now, I think this is turning into the same problem of the previous match, where Hero has a little bit too much territory to try to defend and potentially not enough troops to do it. Although Lurker Tech is on the way. And thus far, I do. There is a robotics facility. I'm not sure where the observer is. I don't see an observer with this group, so it is possible there could be some lurkers to rescue the day. Psystorm catching a lot, but not the lurker lines, and that is eight lurkers at the rear to close the gap. The zealots losing their lives out on the front. Snow upon seeing those lurker going to back off, and a big win for hero. Big win for hero. Being able to buy himself some time to grow that troop count, get some more units on the ground. And Snow being relegated to just slow storm his way through this. Hive tech up. In the meantime, and the, the supply count has closed. Hero with literally a heroic comeback. We also have double evolution chamber running behind this. Plus one carapace already finished to meet so it's not like Snow has a higher upgraded army as well. I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be honest. I thought after that opener, Snow had this locked. He's got Snow's got the third base up, though, and usually this is a problem for Zerg, is, is they manage to get Protoss locked to two bases, and then it's, okay, what do we do now that the third is up and running? But I feel like Hero is going to be maybe okay just because of the upgrade. I think he's got an upgrade lead now, yeah, with plus two spines. Diving and crashing on this army, causing it to split and scatter for snow. It's being pushed back. The Zerglings are also going to have the Adrenal upgrade in not too long, which means they're going to be able to shred both buildings and Dragoons. Snow going ahead and grabbing that 3 o'clock base simultaneously to push into the late game. As a supply lead, he's still got an advantage overall, but I feel like Hero's really making a run at this. Really making a strong run at this. Some cannons now warping in. 
the observers now taking the field. So those lurkers not going to be quite the defensive posture that they would be previously. We are seeing a lack of the shuttle push in that zealot going to get swarmed at the nine o'clock to open up that base potentially. Overlord discovering that third. Snow has a big army to defend. It looks like the Overlord also getting a good in the main, getting a good look at that uh, worker, or I should say the production count in the rear. Two Zealots moving in. They're heavily damaged, not able to pick off that drone. So Hero should be able to go ahead and grab that. But the Lurker defensive line getting a lot of hits off. Being thin, Hero redrawing it. Looks like he wants, he's drawing the Hydralisk army to the south. There was an army of Zealots to go ahead and engage that just in case they were on the movement. But again, with that plus two weapons, picking off some High Templar and able to push Snow's armies back a bit. And I think that really is because of that upgrade differential. Re-engaging on the Hydra, while they're in smaller numbers, the Zerglings trying to swarm towards the front. Psystorm eliminating that threat. More Zerglings starting to make their way across and Hero trying to push up onto the high ground into the Dragoons. Snow needs to retreat this army. If he ends up losing this army, that would, that would be catastrophic for him. Especially if there's a large group and we do have a lot of Zerglings that could... He's got a single Archon to try to defend against the Zerglings from here. Which is going to leave those Dragoons very vulnerable to those Adrenal Upgraded. Plus one Carapace, even. Units. High Templar out in the front. Gets a bit of a side storm off, but is nearly taken out. The Observer is basically being ignored. Overlord out of position. And now the Zerglings. Yeah, basically Hero just trying to buy time to get the Zerglings on top of the Dragoons. And still has enough Hydralists left over to get a pretty decent trade. He has a supply lead in this match now. We'll see how long that maintains. A Dark Templar sneakily waiting at the 9 o'clock location to maybe shut down mining there. It is 4 base versus 4 base, which usually means Protoss is ahead. However, Hero with the 10 supply lead. We do have a shuttle waiting to maybe open things up as well. Units streaming across one another. So Hero looking to bypass this army and shut down the 6 o'clock. You can see the Zerglings, how quickly they just chew through these armies. With level 2 Carapace now, as they're able to get troops in smaller groupings. Yeah, if he, it, Snow has to keep that army cohesive. 30 supply and lead now for Hero. Snow having to shell up and move towards the late game. Two High Templar to help defend that third. Hero denying that 6 o'clock. Overlord still waiting there. We do have an Overlord over... Or sorry, the Dark Templar waiting there. We do have an Overlord overhead, potentially. Snow wants this base at the 6 o'clock, though. So he can hold the high ground. Sai storming his way in. Too far a reinforcement point for Hero, so he's just going to have to pull back now. Little bit of a lack of observer discipline as that Lurker able to get a, a few free hits, and there's also that Lurker field mid-map, but Hero still has managed to resurge, and wow, plus two. He's running the uh, three evolution chambers. Level three weapons. Has an upgrade advantage, which is very rare for Zerg. Versus, in any Zerg versus Protoss matchup. Some Dragoons getting cut out. The Zerglings can honestly just be expended here. 50 supply deficit, granted, and that probe going to get caught once again here at the 6 o'clock to deny that 6 o'clock base. And right now, because, again, because of that upgrade differential, Snow is not getting favorable trades out on the map. Psy storming a bit there, getting pressed towards his natural expansion. Here, once again, denying the 6. Some Reavers now taking the field. Love to see it, finally. But the, the natural has mined out. The main is mined out. So it's two base versus uh, five base at this stage. Hero with a 60 supply lead. And two reavers that he's got to thread somewhere around the map. Looks like he's just actually going to slow play them to push out. I can't remember the last time I saw a Zerg open like this. And sweep so strong. It's really a testament to Hero's macro play. Dark Templar in the midst. 
Tiro trying to get crashed down. It looks like he's also got Zerglings able to wipe out a cannon. You can see how quickly they take those cannons down. Dark Templar doing some damage back there. I think that Dark Templar got wiped out behind the nine before it was really able to accomplish anything. Dark Templar waiting to the upper right. Hydralis is not quite clearing it. Again, clearing out, making sure that there's nothing at the six. Wants to grab that base. A Defiler is now out on the field. Full energy, but not able to drop anything. I'm wondering if it's got... Yeah, Plague is not yet researched. But now Snow bullying forward with some Psy Storm. Once Plague's upgraded, things are going to get even worse for Snow. He's really going to have to watch that 3 o'clock and his third... Or is that, yeah, the 3 o'clock and his third. Felt weird saying three twice there. Hero now maxed versus a 40, a 40 supply lead over Snow. Snow looking to engage and maybe wipe out that 9 o'clock base. Double Reaver along that edge. Zergling sweeping in. Psystorm right there. The Zerglings able to get position, but Hero is trickling the troops in, which is allowing the Reaver explosions and the Psystorm to win the battle. Great win for Snow right there. And also it looks like a lot, just not enough hotkeys potentially for Hero. So Snow continuing to barrel through and now threatening Hero's nine o'clock catching some troops scrambling that direction. And that is going to be Psystorm bait coming down from the high ground. Looks like now with a better spread and coming in simultaneously, Hero able to shove a lot of these troops back. The shuttle is gone. Look how quickly those Reavers die. You think, you wouldn't think that more Zerglings would be the counter to Reaver, but it is. Zerglings also sweeping into the 6 o'clock. We got the classic cannon Dark Templar defense. 11 kills on that, that Dark Templar. Doing his work. But more units swarming across. 10 supply lead and not a lot of Psy Storm left for snow. So things looking ugly. Also, a Defiler has managed to make its way this direction, although I don't think it's going to have a lot to plague. Waiting for its moment to maybe do so. You can see it's just waiting, but it it's, doesn't have a lot of bunched up troops to... Maybe didn't have enough energy, but really, yeah, it's just not even a lot of troops for Snow. He's down 50 supply now. Bottom left-hand base being attacked by Snow. It looks like a Dark Templar is able to sneak through the, the wings, but that six o'clock base once again getting pressed. Dark Swarm being dropped, negating the cannon, so it would have been up to Psystorm. There is, there is an Archon here. It's got that plus three weapons, but too many Zerglings and too much surface area, so that six o'clock base is going to get wiped out, and I think that was Snow's last hope. Yeah, Snow's base getting obliterated right there. It looks like some Zerglings being reproduced. Overlord being a little bit lazy. So at least it's getting some drone kills here, bottom left. Looks like another High Templar drop with a Zealot. Snow trying to some desperation tactics now. That third is looking very, very thin. And Hero doing fantastic drone exchanges in the rear lines. Although that Dark Templar is still racking up kills here, bottom left. As there's... So distracted by the shuttle, Snow still making a game of it. Finally recognizing that Dark Templar, but it already got 12 kills. Psy Storm drop. Missed that while I was looking at the heroics here. Zerglings waiting in the main. Shuttle's now gone. So now Snow, has, he's got to defend that 3 o'clock that's soon going to be his final remaining base. A bunch of lurkers... Midfield getting caught, it looks like. And if they bunch up, they're going to get Psy Storm. So that looks like it's going to be a loss for Hero. He's still got a 50 supply lead, however. Some units scattering. Some units on the rear. It looks like some lurkers making their way through. One observer picked off. Second observer pushing its way across. Snow desperately needs to retake territory on the six, but getting having units encroach from both directions. Again, having a High Templar stranded. Archon also taking some free hits as it's trying to retreat. And the Lurker is now moving in. Hero not taking his foot off the gas, looking to obliterate this army. And Snow does not have a lot of minerals left. 
to replenish. So he needs to keep these armies alive and healthy. Reinforcements cut off. And heroes reinforcements just swarming across the map. I think they might even have a rally point on top of the plateau to just stop and engage Snow's army and obliterate it off the face of the map. It looks like another drop bottom left, able to get some more drones. A zealot and some archons this time. Some more zealots making their way bottom left. Want to chew that up. Hero's drone count has actually been suffering, unfortunately, for Snow, despite having the worker count as a result of all of the great harassment he's done. He just hasn't had the bases to saturate the probes across to really make it worthwhile. He's going to get this hatchery bottom left. So a bit of a victory there, but loses the Archon immediately. A drone should very quickly be able to re-grab this, although he's managed to keep Hero's drone count really, really light. Hero's mind out. Actually, might be able to swing this around because Hero... So he's got that 9 o'clock. It would be a miracle, but it's possible. Hero's actually hurting for resources right now. He needs to resaturate after all of Snow's harass. And Snow managing to get a task force out here and deny a lot of mining. So despite only being on a single base, has denied... Has just been an absolute drone assassin and isn't allowing Hero to get any uh, resources in his bank. Still a 40 supply lead from Hero overall. His game to lose. But man, Snow's done a great job of creating some chaos. It looks like, okay, that base is resaturated. The gas still empty. This base not yet saturated. So the main 12 o'clock and natural expansion are empty though. But Hero just going to go for an attack maybe at the natural starting to press into that third there's not it's so dropping a plague it's not mining so i don't know that that's a big win for hero overall but he's still able to wipe out the army snow recognizing he's got nothing left and nothing and no resources to replenish it and hero starting to mine again going to call gg right there i don't know what to say about that game New tactics for Zerg, apparently. Holy cow. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen a uh, one base uh, gas opener and then Zerg have the mid-game economic advantage like that. I'm wondering if it... I would love to hear a more skilled player talk about the mechanics of that. Maybe it's because of Allegro itself and the shorter rust, uh, rush distances. I don't know what to say. Great play from Hero. Going to move on to a map that has created some really fun matches overall in Nemesis. Upper right-hand corner, we have Snow starting as the orange Protoss. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Hero starting as the purple Zerg. I am curious if we're going to see another Zergling opener for oops for hero because keep in mind nemesis all flat land so there's no misfire rate but also we have the zerg eggs that allow entrance to either side and get that high ground up here and that can be a factor either to basically make a an island for yourself out of a base or to play from there. I feel like it's got a lot of interesting things you can do. You can go Lurkers, you can take down everything really rapidly, try to sneak them into your opponent's uh, base. You can go Mutalisks, keep an eye on both areas. You can go drops all over the place. If you're Snow, you can go straight up DT and try to find an angle. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering if we're going to see another Overpool build and then Quick Gas, or if we're just going to see 12th Hatch. This is a four-player map, so I'm expecting more macro play from Hero. But the other thing that Hero is showing us is that he just has an incredible slew of build orders and styles, and he is just so beastly at macro that he can recover and surge out of damn near anything. I'm wondering if Snow is going to go for 12 Nexus here. He's got the pylon in place and is making no movements to drop a gateway or forge. If there was a map to do it, I think this is the map to try to do it on. Overlord making its bottom way, uh, way bottom left for Hero, and yeah, he's going to go for the 12 Nexus.
and start moving out. We have a drone scout. Is it going to go across to the north and just skip? No, it's just checking that there's no cannons <laughs> morphing up there. That's another aspect is, is going for like proxy gateways, proxy cannons, combinations therein. Forge to follow. Snow now going to get first scout as well. So things working out. Sees the drone making its way up. We'll see what Hero's response is. Maybe he's going to go for that three hatch before gas. He's moving out a drone potentially to do so. Maybe at the six o'clock location. Probe making its way in. And is going to spot a lack of gas. Never mind. Hero grabbing that gas now. Maybe he was hoping to get away with it. But instead grabbing it on a, more of a slight del delay rather than anything. I'm wondering if pro players can tell based on like the mutation... I wonder if there's some sort of indicator to let you know when the gas has been grabbed. Either way, I think Snow saw that being placed, so he, he, he has the gas timing. Gateway on the front. We do have that hatchery being grabbed at the 6 o'clock. So Hero's trying to pull a fast one and be like, nope, I wasn't going for a 3 hatch uh, rapidly. Two Zerglings being built. That natural now saturated by Snow, also grabbing that assimilator. So now let's see what Snow's up to. He's got that 7x core being built. Near the natural, maybe to hide tech away from the Overlord, potentially. I do, I would love to see him one of these games go Corsair Reaver. This is a potential map to do it. Again, because you can kind of splash down those. If you take out both assimilators, that then turns it into an island, effectively. on all. If you take down both assimilators on all edges. Because only ghosts can fit through. If you take down one, I think only small units can fit through. So Zerglings. I'm trying to think if Zealots get through or not. Lair being mutated from Hero. I think Snow got an edge of that view. Is also going to make his way to the 6 o'clock to go ahead and scout that hatchery there. No second gas for him yet. Going for a Stargate in his main. So just everything very standard here from Snow. And I like that Hero going to go ahead and try to open up that egg to the south just to make it an easier defense. That is one problem for, I think, Protoss versus Zerg on this map, is, is it is easy for Zerg. I think it's a little bit easier for Zerg to, where usually you need, like, this massive SimCity. Unless you pull out some shenanigans, it can be a little bit harder to assault bases with, like, Zealots running all over the map or something along those lines. Which is, again, why I'm hoping to see, maybe, Corsair Reaver. Instead, I think we might be seeing uh, DT drops. Citadel of Adun. Photon Cannon defensively on the front. Probe again able to sneak back across. One thing on a disadvantage for Zerg is it can be troubling to try to take care of that Probe Scout because it can escape across areas where Zerglings are loath to tread. Interesting here we got, so no 973 attempt, but we are going to see 4 Hatch uh, Hydralisk play. No initial pressure on the front at all from Hero. Overlord taking some damage, and it is going to be a sacrificial child. I'm not sure what the relations are between all Zerg. Are they all brothers and sisters? Sacrificial mother? I don't know where Overlords go on the hierarchy. That's going to put Hero briefly in the red. Has some additional Hydralisks to group up around. I'm assuming this is going to turn into 5-hatch Hydralisk, but I don't see that 5th hatch being placed anywhere as of yet. Also, Hydralisk speed is being upgraded. Corsair being annoying, forcing at least eight Hydralis to remain. And Zealots now marching their way out. Second Photon Cannon on the front. Just in case. Zealot leg speed as well. I haven't seen this fielded from uh, Corsair still being frustrating at the natural. We're going to get yet another Overlord kill. Hero losing a lot of Overlords. And that's kept him pinned in his economy thus far. Now pressing at that natural expansion. Now keep in mind, this was 4 hatch before the press on the front, so just trying to get what free stuff he can. The Zealot's not quite able to sneak through once that Zealot leg speed is finished, which I think it is. Yeah, they can just w walk out and should be able to shove these Hydralis back. Fifth hatchery and an evolution chamber now being dropped. The Corsair's checking things out to get good scouting. That Zergling's still doing good work on those eggs.
and a spire being dropped to follow it. The Corsair should be able to get eyes on it to get the timing of it. Just on the edge of their vision. Now with a surge in troops, Hero turning around. Hero once again in a situation where he's down a lot of workers. So he's at five hatch. He's pretty well defended in. Down a lot of workers. And I don't know with the troops that he's got that, ooh, one zealot getting... Well, it bought some time. And also got a good full look at all of the units that are latently out there. Now seeing a robotics facility, additional photon cannon. Forge is going to be able to... So that'll be a halt on plus one weapons. Temple Archives is up. I'm assuming we're going to see DT drops out on the field. Kind of an odd angle to go in against this gateway. That cannon, I believe, does cover it. We'll see if Hero... He's continuing to build attack units here and there. He's got kind of a contain of these Hydralis, but Snow once again moving out while they're in smaller groupings, getting a good amount of Hydralis kills. The Zerglings rushing in. Try to wipe them out, so... Kind of a pseudo box your Protoss in sort of play here. Keep him from getting that third. A Dark Templar moving out, an Overlord nowhere nearby. So that's going to be a lot of dead troops for Hero being shoved off. Corsair able to check things out, but not quite losing its life. Plus one weapon's about halfway finished. And I think, yeah, Hero wisely going to go ahead and open up that 12 o'clock to see whether Snow was making an attempt at grabbing his third at that location or not. But we have Zealots streaming across. I think they want to open up the eggs to push into the six. Hydralisks right along that egg line should prevent that. Scourge now chasing down those Corsair back to the natural expansion. I think Snow... We'll see if Snow actually puts a probe in that shuttle. In between, going for the uh, drops. A Dark Templar joining that front, just wandering. There's just so much map to cover. Where little groups of Hydralisks like this, where they don't have the Overlord coverage, can get absolutely obliterated. So yeah, scooping up a probe, going to take it to that 12. Scourge already there. One egg is already going to be down. So let's see if Snow also scouts this. I like this play on Hero's part. And smart timing on it as well. I think he's going to break through before that cannon is... And this is going to be a big loss for Snow. Absolutely huge loss. Hero's actually closed the worker count. And going to be able to deny him his third base. Yeah, Zerglings rushing in. No defenses here as of yet. The Dark Templar, I take it back, along that edge. And Hero was not diligent to get that Overlord in position. So instead of being able to take out that 12 o'clock location, the Dark Templar now working on the Assimilator. Huge shift loss. The Zerglings still going to try to scoot through. Wipe those cannons. Just kind of a suicide attempt right now. Trying to distract troops. Zealots moving up to try to clear and save this but not able to save the probe, so that's going to be additional delayed time. I think that was worth it for Hero to lose those units. Trying to dodge that Dark Templar as best they can. Their, their life... Their life is lost, so now they're just buying time. And in the meantime, Hero going ahead and grabbing his fourth at the, next ba at the natural of the next base over. Massive distance for Snow to try to cover, and this is, yeah, big trouble for Snow. Because first of all, that third is going to be severely delayed. He does have that shuttle out someplace. Did I miss it getting taken out? Maybe I missed a drop someplace. Or shuttle death. Out on the field is some scourge, potentially. Nope, there it is. So there's still some drops, but those drops are going to be absolutely necessary. And now we're seeing a tech switch from Hero of Mutalisks. A lot of Dragoons are out. There are two cannons, but with nine Mutalisks, they shred those cannons. And this, there was already an economic problem here for Snow. Two side storms dropping, able to get some of those mutilists. That might be enough, but Snow's worker count plummeting to 38. He's now down a 10 worker count plus a base. Zelt has some man somehow managed to sneak that to that bottom left. And those mutilists can just drive back. Did these units get out somehow? No, these are just new units. The simulator's been wiped out. You're not trapped in here. That Dark Templar has 13 kills. Zealots going for the chase. I think these Zealots are going to get wiped out. These Zealots need to be careful with those Mutalisks out in the field. The probe making its way back to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock. 
under the protective blade of that Dark Templar. This hatchery needs to be saved either by these mutalisks or these hydralisks. Where did the mutalisks go? They moved out to the 12 o'clock to try to get that probe kill. They got the probe kill, not able to stop the Nexus, and being drawn back by these five zelts storming in. I don't think they're going to be in time to really disrupt anything. Might get a kill or two, but that that will basically be it. Yeah, Zelt's getting plugged up. So Hero, 10 worker lead, a massive base lead, strong economy to work with. Everything going right for him as well. Has air control, which is going to make going for the shuttle drops a lot more challenging. We do have a lot of Dragoons out for snow. But unfortunately, usually that's something you want up to work against lurkers. Dragoons aren't... They have trouble against mutalisks. Corsair's trying to... Another probe pick off. Scourge gonna... Yeah, push back. And this might be another base kill. Potentially from Hero. Depending on how many Dragoons press in. Especially if they're trying to engage at a line. Between the Corsair, the High Templar, that is going to cause Hero to go ahead and back up. Two more Dragoons going to end up losing their lives. Going to be pinned up against that Vespine Geyser wall with his friends watching the other end. Brother. Hydralis making their way up to the 12 o'clock location. Now it is possible that they can go all the way around. You can see out the Dark Templar already starting to work on taking down these simulators to turn this into a pure island map. On any other map, I would say this is Hero's game now. But given that Snow can cannon up to defend against the Mutalisks, can take down the Assimilators, and keep doing that around the map progressively, it is possible with some really good... If he can regain air control, potentially he could turn this around and just kind of slow play his way back. Unfortunately, Hero can do something similar where he can just grab the map in the meantime. He's got a huge worker lead, massive economy, Drones already transferring to bottom left. And a formidable attack count. The one difference here between previous games, he's teching the hive. He's got the single evolution chamber. Sorry, double evolution chambers. And that's still going to be a worker lead or an upgrade lead for Snow. Snow losing that pylon spot, losing that Corsair as well. A couple observers getting picked off. Empty Psy Storm. These mules have been fantastic. Let's see if... Yeah, here we're going to go ahead and open up eggs. I'm wondering if he's going to open up eggs, just walk straight down here, take down this assimilator. And then he's got... Or he could open up the eggs here and have kind of a walk route. And effectively, this is where, again, I feel like Reavers and Psystorm and whatever not, it's fantastic, where the... He doesn't have to worry at a, about an attack from either angle here outside of like a massive drop from Hero. Defy their third evolution chamber being dropped, by the way. Mutalisks spotting that those eggs are open, but losing a lot of their numbers as they're floating above the lines. Wanting to catch a High Templar, there's still five. So that's still enough to pick off High Templar. Three remaining. And that is going to clean up their numbers. The supply count now even. Yeah, Hero wiping out that Assimilator at the three o'clock. And now the... Or sorry, Snow wiping out that Assimilator at the three o'clock. And also the Assimilator to the cell. So yeah, Snow going to go ahead and play it Fortress style, taking a lot of territory piece by piece and just shelling himself in and basically making the statement, okay, you got to come to me, hero. And I'm looking for, yeah, the drop upgrade to counter this play. Hero actually at the moment in the red because the counter problem now for Snow is unless he gets Arbiter and Recall, which I would love to see, he's going to have a hard time defending all of this against drops. Lurkers making their way out. So Hero has map control. Snow grabbing that 3 o'clock. Snow not really worried about attacks from any critical angle. Hero grabbing that 9 o'clock as well. Snow just going to slow play it to the 200 supply count with the max upgrades. Never mind. Running into the army mid-map. Dropping some Psy Storm. Maybe just trying to get an eye on it. But it's going to be up to Hero to go for a back-end drop. Kind of go for some backstabs at one of these locations, either maybe a simultaneous drop at the 3 and the 12, something along those lines. Drop on the production uh, production line. Snow trying to keep that 
troop count Finn dropping side storms mid map and then backing his army out. Able to pick off a handful of lurkers. Still down in supply overall. But sitting comfortably on some additional bases is getting those cannons. That cannon line established. Drop is now upgraded. And that is a lot of lurkers joining the fray. There are also some defilers grouped up. And defiler Dark Swarm plus Zergling with that adrenal upgrade will crush bases rapidly. So Hero beefing up the Lurker lines in the mid, going for a drop at the 3 o'clock so he doesn't have to worry about a counterattack. The Zergling's landing. I don't see a Defiler in the midst. But the defense troops wiped out. Yeah, the counterattack now being triggered from Snow mid-map. But there's so many Lurkers there. He's got a lot of time to try to push through. He does have a lot of Psystorm and Dragoons, though. To push those lines. So 3 o'clock base trade for the army in the middle, potentially. Snow, half the worker count, but is able to open things up at the very least. Shuttle making its way. Now Snow going for a counterattack to try to wipe out what's left. And I think that might be GG unless these drops are absolutely mirac uh, miraculous. If Snow loses his army mid-map and having lost that third... So Zealot's unloading here bottom left. We only have three Hydwills to defend. Still a huge bunch of Lurkers. That is Psystorm bait. Shuttle taking a lot of damage. The drones trying to defend themselves. And more Hydralisks pushing in. So yeah, it looks like the Zealot's not going to be able to accomplish a lot there. And a Plague drop mid-map. Things looking rough for Snow overall. So his main is mined out. His natural expansion will be mined out in just a moment. He's only mining at the 12 o'clock. And Hero has... Well, 6 o'clock is mined out, but he's got a lot of bases to work with. And he's starting to swarm in the middle. There's GG from Snow. Yeah, recognizing the situation. I kind of like the idea, but... Hard to... I don't know. Hard to execute against a player of Hero's caliber. So Hero taking the win on Nemesis as well. We're going to move on to what is a standard staple of a map in Vermeer. Four-player map overall. And usually I would say on Vermeer that against any other Zerg, I'd be like, yeah, Snow probably could pull this out. But showing Hero's brutal macro thus far has really made him look like he could take a championship here. Upper left hand corner we have Hero starting as the Browns are bottom right we got Snow starting as the Red Protoss once again on Vermeer. At cross bond position I always find the cross bond position somewhat interesting because the spokes so when you have that parallel you've got these spokes as a retreat point for armies either Lurker Lines or Zealot Dragoon Lines, where they end up in the darkness and can attack from the high ground. Usually Dragoon's more of a issue right there. But when you're talking about cross position, even though it's a longer rush point, you don't have the retreat spokes unless you're redirecting your army. And I kind of like it as a... It's, it's an interesting feature in comparison to other maps. I think Vermeer might be my favorite of the newfangled maps. I'm wondering if Snow gonna go for try to go for that quick economic lead once again and go for the 12th hatch. Given the on standard maps, how often though Hero has been going for the early pools, could be very risky. We do have an initial overlord in production, so if it was going to be a pool first, it would be an overpool. I might be scratching my head if I was Snow as well, because what is Hero gonna toss out? Are we gonna see another uh, nine pool rapid zergling upgrade into mass drone off map control. Gateway first opener. We need to scout bottom left hand corner first. Looks like Hero is going to open up with an 11 hatch. So they're at cross positions though. Those zealots going to have some trouble if they're going to try to score some early kills. Probe not anywhere in time to go ahead and get a hatchery disruption. But should get a, a decent scout. 
Drone Scout moving out for Hero as well, although kind of taking a weird route around, maybe just wanting to make sure that there weren't, sometimes probes will end up behind the lines off a forge first opener and try to go for a cannon blockade. Drone actually wanting to engage here. And it looks like now it's only going to have, oof, and it's got to wander out. So I think where this might have initially been a scouting drone, now instead it's going to be hopefully a hatchery drone for Hero, but he needs to run as that probe is angry. You've pissed, it's like a little pissed off bee wanting to get a drone kill to start. And so Hero having to put on some additional micro, two more hits away, one more hit away. Got him! Vicious little probe gets the win. Spawning pool to follow. Zealot making its way out. Snow going to go ahead and drop a Nexus. Two Zealots streaming across the map. And that... Another three hatch. This time a pure three hatch before gas as that probe at the very least was distracted out of the main but should be able to wander up and confirm it. Well, maybe not. Drone blockading for the moment. Two Zealots are bearing in. We do have four Zerglings. So these alts could get some damage done, really. It looks like they're going to wander up and maybe harass that third. So Hero previously, where he was going for large Zergling counts to negate this sort of play previously, it looks like he does have a, a grouping of Zerglings to follow. The Zergling is getting pulled out of position now, maybe because of their the humiliation of his brethren's death. And so the Zealot's going to be able to disrupt some economic play. Hero going for an immediate pull, pull of the drones into the main, the Zerglings getting a disadvantageous engagement point. Drones trying to drill on those Zealots, escaping it pr decently well, but re-engaging. And the Zealots still able to micro their way and get a lot of Zergling kills, which is going to force some more Larva. Especially, actually, never mind. The Zergling got all the way to the main on the opposite side, but drone kills happening opposite side. This looks like it could be a quick one in Snow's favor. Although... I've said that previously with some of these openers and heroes somehow surged back economically every time. One zealot finally getting taken out. Five kills on that zealot. The zerglings having to retreat, which might open up another drone kill. They're trying to stay out of the drone lines. Finally, a regrouping. This is so many zerglings that have had to been produced. Now, th this is the thing. I said that in game one where I'm like, okay, so many zerglings were produced. That's a big hit to the early game economy, but it didn't seem to matter for Hero. He's got that third hatch up. He's got the larva. A probe, that different probe this time, making its way out. Cybernetic score being built at the natural rather than a, and the forge being built in the main to guarantee plus one weapons. Kind of like that play. And we are seeing a fourth hatchery with Hydrosten. So another, I haven't seen this build and I'm wondering if this is new cutting edge meta stuff. Four hatchery Hydra to maybe potentially get a little bit more Hydralisk out on the field to negate the one gate Zealot pressure from early stages. So maybe you have enough ground forces and that allows you to drone a little bit harder. Second extractor being taken. I'm wondering that usually to me indicates we're going to see a movement to Lair and Lurker, maybe attempted Lurker contain. It is also possible with Lair uh, we'll see a layer upgrade in a full back to Mutalisk transition. But point being, there's going to be a lot of gas to work with from Hero. Photon Cannon preventatively on the front. Additional Gateway Forge Citadel of a Dune dropping as well to go for that 8.30-ish uh, minute. Plus one weapons Zelt leg speed push. Never mind, going to be a sizable gateway push. I assume this is going to be some Zealot Archon maneuver for Snow. Hydralisks taking the field. They're going to have that speed upgrade. I like the fan out here from Hero across the mini. If you look on the mini map, just getting absolute vision spread to try to catch those Zealots. Corsair moving across, seeing where the lines are. The Zealots going to go ahead and march out and take down the Zerglings while they're not gathered up and their superior zealot numbers. Get the free wins where you get them. So yeah, still no... T so it looks like it is just going to be... Yeah, four hatch Hydralisk uh, play. 
which is allowing a little bit more hydralisk bufferage and also a little bit of a higher drone count. And you notice, yeah, this is a sizable group of Hydralis to deal with these Zealots right this stage before plus one weapons and leg speed are hitting. But I think one critical aspect of this is they do need to go out and get Zealot kills. And it looks like they're attempting to do so now, hunting them across the map. The Corsair going for an Overlord kill at the main. The Hydralis still pouring out. So ignoring the Zealots now. And is this going to turn into kind of a delayed... Yeah, so cans being dropped from snow as this is turning into kind of a delayed version, yeah, four hatch bust on the front. The Zelt's turning around. They're going to have plus one weapons and potentially Zelt leg speed to deal with it, though. Yeah, there's Zelt leg speed kicking in right now. I'm going to be able to crash on now pinned in Hydralisks between the cannons and the lines. So rather than a... Actually, I was way off on the timing of that. So rather than the Zelt's being dedicated to attack the front. They're having to deal with the Hydralists that are taking down the cannons at the natural. A lot of the Hydralists have been wiped out. Ooh, are they going to get that Corsair kill? No. Still, I think this is... Between the cannons, the probes, and the latent Zealots, with the Zealot Lake Speed and plus one weapons, should be able to defend this, but Hero pouring on the pressure. It looks like this is some sort of... new bust. Yeah, the drone count remains unchanged, and he is still moving Hydralists to the front. Potentially recognizing he's taken out enough Zealots that he can make up the difference. Zealots again moving back out. Some nice micro from Hero. Was trying to hide the Hydralis, but might as well engage them now. Yeah, this is going to be a bust. Got a second control group waiting in the wings. Is hiding them briefly, now engaging them. Big cannon line moved up. Pushing in with them, a couple of them scattering along that back edge, but now peeling in. A High Templar moving out, but does not have enough energy for Storm. Probes pulling as well. The Zealots have been shredded. Four cannons remain. The Probes engaging the Hydralisks along that edge and getting some good damage and also blockading them away from the cannons at the rear. I think Snow does hold. Few Hydralisks remaining, and that was a huge resource dedication. Still a worker lead, and that should provide enough time for... Well, I hopefully enough time for Psystorm to get engaged. A couple more cannons might be necessary, and the probes... This is lost mining time on the front. Hero, upon recognizing no success there, redroning. It looks like this is just going to turn into a contain. He does have layer up and a spire. Interesting play. I haven't, I haven't yet seen that. out there and it uh i think it might be a, might it definitely caught snow a little bit off guard idols trying to get the last bit of peck damage size storm is complete Plenty to use size storm otherwise but yeah now hero going ahead and dropping that fifth hatchery and filling in the drone count also going for a spire kind of like the spire play because there's no cannons in the main the corsair count has been low the great North American Protoss player slash Zerg player Jayun has said in the past, when do you go Muta versus Protoss? When they let you. And I think this is an opportunity for Hero. Stacking a lot of gas. Let's see if that Corsair is able to spot the Spire. Might be an emergency moment. It's going to be a critical scout. So seize the Spire. But does that trigger cannon drop? In the main. Oh, look at this. Dark Archon morphing as well as uh, Maelstrom to pin those Mutalists to maybe get some Psy Storm. So Snow, with the 5D play now, already recognizing a potential counter to a Mutalisk switch. And I'm wondering if Hero... Yeah, so he's building a slew of Mutalisks now at the main and the natural. But he's got a lot of Psy Storm. He's got Archons with Maelstrom. So if those Mutalisks get caught, that will be a l huge loss for Hero. A big dump of resources and gas down the drain. The Zealots pushing units off the front. Overlord also going to get wiped out. Here are the Mutalisks trying to engage those Zealots and the Corsair. Hero actually in the red. And I think Hero, the one problem is, is that Dark Archon yeah, needs to find the Mutalisks 
in order to drop Maelstrom to hold them in place. Doing a great job hiding it in the back corner, baiting it. Two cannons are there. All of this gas just waiting. And there's the Dark Archon. Gets the Maelstrom. There's the Psy Storm. Beautiful. And that was a big win for Hero. Massive economic investment down the drain. Love to see it. I think I saw something similar. Uh, uh, last time I saw something like this was out of uh, DeWalt. Love it. Snow immediately moving out on the map. Can easily grab his third as a follow-up. He's got... You can just bully these Hydralisks back out. They have no weapon upgrades versus plus one, plus one armor. Plus, you've got the Maelstrom. Yeah, Hero actually has to play a little bit more defensively because if one of these Hydralisk armies gets Maelstromed, he's not going to have sufficient troops to defend otherwise. Another Mutalisk ball out, though. Wanting revenge. There's not enough energy... They are going to pick off some High Templar. Ate a lot of Psy Storm. At least the High Templar would picked off. It looks like some Dragoons getting caught. So Hero going for round two with the Mutalus this time. Although, yeah, they need to be careful because another Corsair can sneeze them down considering their health. Regardless, this is going to be an easy third base grab for Snow. Hero trying to grab his fourth. The supply count actually dead even. The worker count very, very close as well, which usually means Zerg is ahead. Lorker Aspect just now being upgraded. And I'm a bit concerned for Snow here. I think maybe he's going to wait for the Maelstrom to regenerate. I think he still might want to press the issue. Oh, that Dark Archon out of position to help deal with the Mutalisks now, diving in to the natural expansion, going to get a lot of probe kills. And Hero with that, actually able to get the worker lead. Hero is a miracle worker. I have to say, like, honestly, if I said, oh yeah, the Zerg player ended up losing uh, a full control group, practically, of Mutalisks and Scourge for nothing, basically. I wouldn't say, yeah, all of a sudden Zerg's ahead. But right now, if you look at the supply counts, if you look at the saturation and the base holdings, Hero's in a great spot. He's hurting for the upgrade race, though. Plus one weapons just now kicking in. Actually, not as bad as I thought. thought that was plus one weapons upgrading there. Regardless, uh, third base is established. Usually that's problem for Zerg, period. Usually they want to either deny that third and win the game from there. But this is really going to be an X factor. This Mutalisk army, because the Corsair count is still low. The Dark Archon, again, still out of position. Snow maybe was trying to go for a forward warning with these Zealots. Or at least maybe wander them out in the map and get some kills. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Now starting to move out a bit as heroes being silent. Massive amount of lurkers. Morphing. Queen's Nest dropping to make movements towards uh, late game hive tech as well. I like that Snow is at least crushing the vision mid map. Which means he could strike at various locations. The Mutalists, now that they've regenerated, uh, regenerated a little bit of help, attacking towards the main, but recognizing, I guess, there's not a lot of minerals there, wanting to make movements back. Wanted some High Templar popping out of there. Instead finds Dragoons and is going to have to pull out as a result. But let's see if he dives in, is able to get something else accomplished. Again, still, even in a uh, worker count. And across more bases and has that lead. Let's see if he can get another, ooh, eat some size from so that'll be it. But I think the Maelstrom could make this an interesting trade. Yeah, the Hydralis not able... Ooh, just getting obliterated by that combination right there. More Psy Storm. The Dark Archon does get wiped out, but it's really served its purpose. And the Mutalisk no longer in a position to deny a fourth base to Snow. Needs it as his main is more or less mined out. Snow checking the top right, making sure Hero has not 
establish any holdings yet. There is a drone waiting. Hero trying to keep his army in between Snow's army. It looks like Snow has a storm of zealots that might want to take a shot. The rally point for Hero does have reinforcements along that edge. These lurkers are very bunched up. Snow able to exploit that somewhat. Managed to sneak some troops through. It looks like to check that top right. Snow's army a little bit more cohesive in the center of the map. And as a result, able to peck away at the lurker lines, get some size storms, get some of those juicy gas kills. While establishing, it looks like that fourth able to transfer probes. Able to transfer probes? Never mind. Probes a little bit on an early transfer to the main. Some zerglings shooting the gap. In small numbers, that, that small number, I don't think they're going to get a lot accomplished. Also quickly being dispatched on the main. Level 2 armor to help deal with the potential mutilisk attacks as well. Hero pushing up with that army, wanting to evict Snow from that upper right-hand base. Looks like some Dark Templar have managed to get up, and they're completely wiping out that army in the upper right. The Overlords might be a target here for Snow, just to make sure they don't make in the upper right to salvage that army, although he's stepping a little bit too far forward without his own detection. Oof, that's a lot of units to lose. More side storm dropping. Snow now with a big worker, with a big supply surge lead. A big army threatening. So first of all, denying the top right. You can just see the panic on that drone's face, just spinning around, knows he's not long for this life. Dark Templar just hunting everything else, and Snow slowly walking forward with his army, wiping out the lurker lines, eating a lot of damage along the way. But no carapace upgrades means these lurkers are quickly getting melted. And now that 12 o'clock base exposed, you can see a desperation attempt on the observers to keep the lurkers in place. But Snow now utilizing that high ground misfire lane and pushing, and he's still got zealots if there's an over dedication of troops to defend the 12 o'clock, might be able to shoot zealots. Never mind, they're getting spotted by Zerglings. Dying in large numbers, but Snow slowly threatening and walking up towards that 12 o'clock, just dropping Sidestorm along the way. And now, I don't think Hero can defend the 12th. He just doesn't have the, the bulk flesh in Zerg supply to make it happen. Somehow those Zealots still alive bottom left. Barreling that army in, he does need to worry a little bit, and you can see he's holding the spoke behind this of ending up with this army trapped. But he's got such a supply lead, I don't think it he needs to be all that concerned. Yeah, you can see the reinforcements for Hero moving up and running into the Dark Templar Psy Storm Archon Wall. Recognizing needs to try to defend that, instead is just going to end up expending troops on that spoke. Great positional play here from Snow. And obliterating that 12 o'clock, that should be a GG from Hero overall as he's going to be down to just two bases, yeah. So Snow coming right back at him with a solid victory. We're gonna move on to our final map. If you guys are keeping track, we have an even series. And we're going to, in my opinion, the weirdest map of the grouping, and the one most likely to give us Corsair Reaver in Neo Arkanoid. I don't know what we're going to see on this map, considering all the things that uh, all, all that's transpired thus far. Four hatch uh, Hydralisk and a later stage busts. Bottom right hand corner, we have Hero starting as the Purple Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Snow. As a quick reminder of, oops, quick reminder of Neo Arkanoid, you have a bunch of Protoss temples and power generators and whatnot blockading the way, so it's semi island. You have four mature chrysalises, not in, not, not immature, not childlike chrysalises, full mature chrysalises, blockading uh, two nearby additional bases, five thousand gas full, and the standard. 
what is that? Seven patches? I think that's... Or six patches? Six patch, 1,500 minerals at either location. So, I think it is... So between, like, Nemesis, which is kind of semi-island, and this being semi-island, this is definitely more on the weirder side. We've I've seen a lot of Zerg go one hatch Mutalisk. Usually, just automatically, you're going to go air on this, right? We'll see what, if Snow's got something up his sleeve. I like it as a concept, and I think it creates interesting matches. Overlord making its way top right. And I don't know who to call overall. Considering the shenanigans that are pullable on this map, maybe Snow. He's already going for a gateway opener. So it's possible he's just going to try to open his way straight across the map, not even bother with anti-airplay. Or maybe actually take it back. He's probably got this gateway hugging this wall because he wants to spot the Zerglings just in case they come across that edge. Dropping that assimilator, still probably going to go to Corsair to start. In base second hatchery from Hero. Still no gas. I'm wondering if he's... Huh. So we'll see what that turns into. So rather than going for an offset hatchery or going for quick gas, it looks like he maybe wants a lot of Zerglings to start to open up those sideline chrysalis, cybernetic core immediately. And I'm wondering if he's going to skip early game Mutalisk play altogether and maybe try to play Hydra Lurk in the mid game. Lots of possibilities opened up. But a drone now moving across. Now going to yeah use that offset hatchery to get a little bit faster gas. So this is turning into an, some variation on a three hatch Mutalisk play, but less gas at the main and kind of offset gas or at the natural and kind of offset gas otherwise. Forge on the front for snow. We do have that Stargate also warping in and probe checking out that corner, a single zealot working its way through the chrysalises to the north. Two Zerglings are out. It looks like they're not going to bother with the Chrysalises on either side or instead opening up that Temple line. I am really curious what Hero is up to. Yeah, he's going to go for a Hydralis bust. Interesting. So skipping airplay altogether. Snow is certainly going to be able to scout this, however. And it, honestly, I don't know that there is that big a dedication of resources on Snow's end of things. I mean, it's just that single Corsair to get scouting. He can go ahead and drop it. Hydra speed as well. This is like a weird three hatch. And it can't really be all that rapid a bust, I don't think, because there's just too much territory to cover, right? Hero's got something. Corsair making its way out. That is, oh, the, so the Zerglings have been spotted. I think, by Snow. So making his way bottom right. That is one problem, is, is there's no other way to scout. And actually with this gateway placement, it might be a challenge for... Yeah, to get uh, move out. So two Corsair dedication that the Hydralists have been spotted. The Hydralists are already moving out. And they're at that temple line. Hero supply block, though. And if he's moving those... Hydralis forward, he's going to end up exposing those overlords. So at the very least, four Zerglings might be able to breach the front. There's already two Zealots alongside with the blockade. A much better Nexus placement at the natural now for Snow. The Zerglings looking to shoot the gap, but a cannon greeting them. Offset base for Hero. And the Corsairs, yeah, scouting everything. Seeing that it is, in fact, a Hydralisk opener. They haven't gotten to the natural expansion, and rather than going for gas here, it looks like they are, in fact, going for minerals. Just at an offset. So Snow has an eyeful. He's got all of the information he needs. Dropping a second cannon just in case. But the Corsair are such a nuisance 
but yeah, you can see Hero is thinking, okay, maybe I'll move the Hydralisk, but as soon as he tries to move the Hydralisks out towards the front, Snow's right back there. Yeah, sees them moving out of the gap and jumps right back on that Overlord to pick it off and put Hero back into the red. Now the question is, is will there be enough cannons and zealots on the front? So Hero in the red. That's seven Hydralis. It looks like he's going to try to take another angle. There is a probe waiting there. And unfortunately, I don't know that there... Oh, so looks like Hero's just going to try to maximize on the fact that there are too many engagement locations. And now does Snow have an army to, to repel this? It doesn't look like he does. He's going to have a Reaver out. But this is going to be close. So it's going to be basically a Reaver cannon defense at the main, interior to Snow's main. That temple being left weak. Reach using... Okay, now being opened up. Finding no expansion there. Are they going to engage? Single Zergling wandering out. That would be a wasted Scarab if it fires. Spots the tech, but gets nothing else. And now it's turned into a very interesting positional game. Worker count's just about even an additional hatchery being planted. For Hero, he does have Lair upgraded. He also has the Mutalisks constructed. A lot of territory to try to cover from Snow. Hydralisks being wiped out, but that shuttle now able to scoop up troops and move about the map. And that's only four Hydralisks remaining. Could And keep in mind, Snow's Reaver Micro with Shuttle Supreme. Hydralisks moving up to go ahead and open up a potential third. Let's just watch the glory potentially. Zealots dropping first to engage the Hydralisks. Big hit gets a drone. Actually, could have been worse. Defensive Sutton Colony being dropped. The Hydra is going to position towards that 9 o'clock to create some disruption. And again, Snow just doing what he does best with that shuttle speed, staying on the absolute edge. Getting some additional drone kills. So now that drone count dropped to 10. And the Corsairs and that shuttle remain active. Might be able to stymie that 9 o'clock. Let's see if they make a dive at the 9. Also, not a lot of defenses... Sorry, at the three, not the nine. Going to get a couple free Hydralisks. Maybe. Oh, nice Dragon Dodge. Unfortunately, not able to juke that one. And that drone, I don't know what it was thinking. It is certainly going to die. No base for you. So I don't know if this temple line's been detected. Okay, yeah, some additional pylons being placed to maybe get some cannons down on location. Scourge making their way out. Five Corsairs pulling back. Plus one weapons has not yet completed, but that's going to be necessary. And I'm wondering if that shuttle's just going to meander up to the north. Drop a scarab. Yep. Clean things up. Just a scourge are coming up to try to make something happen. Six Corsair out. Should easily be able to obliterate and hold air control. If I was Hero, I'd be shaken a little bit. He's okay on the worker count. He's just now getting that third base up. He's down on a lot of supply. Ooh, has a lot of idle drones here. But, yeah, Snow and his Reaver play are legendary. And so it could be a sizable threat. Plus one weapons finishing. Some Zealot's going to go ahead and clear out going to make more moves. I think that Sutton Colony was a good play. Massive amount of Scourge taking flight. That Temple Line discovered. Zealot dropping to eat the initial shots. Drone scattering. Two drones down. The Scourge peeling in but holding short. Wisely, only a single Scourge being sent in to get a look at the lines. Single circling left, working on that Zelnaga Temple. But yeah, I think Snow was maybe trying to bait a lot of those Scourge back to wipe them out. I don't even know that opening this... Opening up area where that uh, Reaver can land 
and do additional damage is going to be beneficial, I guess, maybe for positioning purposes. Another two Hydralis down. There's the Scourge. Able to take out that shuttle. Now that Reaver's stranded. Now the rest of the Scourge. Woo. Moving in in massive numbers. But only getting a single Corsair. With that plus one weapon upgrade. That was a lot of gas to expend. Sutton Colony also upgrading at the three o'clock. The base is not... The third base has not yet been grabbed from Snow. He's got two more Reavers waiting. To be loaded. More shuttles constructing. Some gateways also being built. Psystorm. As well. And now... Unfortunately for Hero, he might have done some of Snow's work for him once that ground force starts fielding out. Kind of want to see him go uh, the D-Web. We haven't seen D-Web out here yet, though. Reavers getting some free shots. Zealots grouping up to provide some support to the north. And yeah, this is just not a sufficient unit composition for the task, and so he's going to have to retreat all the way back. Scourge pushing in. Get one Corsair and nothing else. There's still five remaining, which is a golden number. That is a big grouping of Hydralisks. But, so Snow going to retreat for the moment. But honestly, that might just be, uh, that might just cause Snow to lick his lips a little bit. I think uh, outside of drones, Hydralis potentially the second favorite meal of a Scarab. Something Colony down at the three to potentially open up things. Looks like Snow going to go ahead and grab his third. More Corsair filtering out. More Reavers taking flight as well. Scourge keeping an eye at least on that Zealot army. It's also a secondary problem. Plus one weapons is upgraded on both sides. Dark Templar now dropping as there are a lack of overlords. One shuttle taken down. That will strand the Dark Templar, but nothing else. And now Hero's Economy taking a battering. And I don't... Oof, those Dark Templar and Reavers make short work of these hatcheries. Already down to half health. Overlord in forward position, but those Corsairs can quickly wipe those out. So it's kind of an interesting chess game between Reavers, Dark Templar, and Overlord positioning. More Overlords being built, recognizing the situation. Snow scooping up and exiting. Still up 20 supply. And that was a lot of lost mining time there at the 3 o'clock. And this is really a scramble game for Hero. You can just see he's having to move Hydralisks all over the place. Some of them getting lost to the south. It is three bases versus three now being saturated. And in standard Brood War economics, that means Snow has the lead. Although he is down workers overall. Going the far end around with his Corsairs, just making sure additional bases haven't been snuck. Zealots might want to, yeah, get out of dodge here. One big advantage for Snow as well in the Corsair Reaver play is since it is kind of an island map, you already have that built-in long-term defense force that you can place at any map. A bunch of mutal or sorry, Hydralisks starting to peel out. And Snow also opening up that second temple for that middle move line. It's been so focused, so heavy uh, on gas, otherwise really hasn't had the resources to push the upgrades. Hero closing the gap in supply a little bit. This is the Psy Storm could be the difference here. You have to keep in mind as well as there's a lot of supply that's in shuttles and reavers that are not here. Nevertheless, Hero retreating mid-map. Nexus being grabbed top left. Some great side storms from Snow. And Hero slowly retreating. Now going for a drop at the 6 o'clock location. High Templar already in position. Trying to focus on that Reaver. Second Reaver. Or sorry, the, that defense force moving right back. And not a lot of losses from Snow. I think he, what, lost maybe four probes? And had a little bit of delayed mining there. 40 supply lead for him now. 
And actually, Hero, after that attack, is going to end up losing these Overlords as well to the Corsairs. He's in the red and has an army, a sizable army from Snow, barreling down the pipe. And it's going to be a minute before he's going to be able to cycle troops. Fortunately for him, it looks like Snow is going to reposition and try to open up the 6 o'clock. This is where the early Zelnaga temple damage from that Zergling... Zergling turned into a traitor at the end. The horror. Emergency creep colonies being dropped for very hopeful sunken colonies. Hydralisks grouping up to maybe... But this is such a funnel for Psystorm as well. The Hydralisks just waiting along that right-hand edge. Yeah, they're getting Psystormed on their own lines. And there's GG from Hero, recognizing that Snow is going to be able to wipe out the 6 o'clock. He's also got an additional base going up in the upper left. And so overall, Snow prevails and gets his revenge. Which was, a, which was a really fun series, honestly, overall. I think this was the most entertaining one out of the batches I was given. If you guys enjoyed it, give a like and subscribe to StarCast TV. I appreciate your viewership as always. Thank you for listening.